So I usually don't do a lot of uh, coverage on like supercars or anything exotic or anything like that. But one of my friends that I've made here, who goes by the name of Mark, specifically Mark McLovin, has a really, really cool McLaren. I don't really know much about him, but he's gonna let me drive it. And I thought it'd be cool if he pulls up real quick and I let him talk a little bit about his car because it's pretty special. If you can give me the rundown, I know nothing about McLaren, so whatever model it is, I know. did you say you have like different bumpers on it and stuff? Yeah, so this is a 2012 uh, MP412C. So as you know, if you look at the backs in the front, they're completely different. And I didn't do the conversion, but the uh, original owner did the conversion and they upgraded the front and the rear to the 650. So it's got a 650S uh, front end to the carbon uh, front splitter. And on the rear, it actually has a really, Rare MSO, they put it on the Nürburgring edition uh, and the Le Mans edition uh, 650S. So if you check out the rear diffuser too, it's like super aggressive. One of the things that stuck out the most to me about this car at first is I got really confused because I didn't realize each side of the car is completely different. And I thought, you, I, I thought you were two different people. Everybody thinks we have two different cars when we're running. So this side of the car, it's got a crazy cool textured wrap with green wheels, while the other side, is white and purple so i guess one thing that would be really interesting i know that these cars have a turbo v8 right 3.8 liter turbo v8 okay i knew we weren't gonna be able to talk over that thing <laughs> so uh man everybody's gonna be trying to make noise for our clips so what have you done to it performance wise all that jazz it's got dme tuned pure turbos and quicksilver basically straight through exhaust. And what is that good for, like power-wise? It's making about seven, seven, 10 of the wheels. So these cars are rear-wheel drive. Yeah. Uh, you're on what, 325 R888s? Correct, yeah. It probably spins first gear, yeah? First, second, a little bit in third. Yeah. He's got exhaust too. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a similar car to yours that just went by? 570. Got it. Yeah, it's Jonathan's 570. Are those like better than yours? Is... Um, I mean, I think realistically it's just, this has a little bit better suspension. Uh-huh. Uh, this is, this did run a faster time, but those things are, I think they're just as equivalent, but when we started getting up in the 200s, I did beat them. What did you run with this car? Like what was your top speed? 204. 204 miles an hour and 2.3 miles. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, it hit it a lot closer than that. Oh yeah, and then the car started falling off, right? Yeah, I think it started falling off. Interesting. But anyway, you are crazy enough to let me drive this thing, so I thought it'd be cool to just make a little video showing it off real quick. You can pop it, but it's so low to the ground. That's why these things handle so well. We were talking about this. The, they basically copied the design of this motor from that Nissan. What was the motor? Uh, I think it was, it was a VHR, so yeah. like their VH45, was it, or something like that? Something like yeah, but or the VH35. I don't know. I don't remember. Something I, like that. I know nothing about exotic cars. I know nothing about McLarens. This car has just kind of caught my eye, and I've always been kind of fascinated by them. And I know that people say they're just unreal and out of this world in terms of how what is it? Uh, I don't want to say computerized they are, but like how perfect everything is. Too refined. Everything yeah. Is so refined. There you go. So I also have a UGR Lamborghini, and it's a manual Gallardo, but. That thing is a scary to drive. This thing you can push it. Some people say it makes you a better driver. I think it doesn't make you a better driver. It just makes you seem like a better driver because the car basically does everything. Now the thing that caught my eye the most while we're filming this video right now, I was looking at his license plate. I was like, man, so you just took your plate off or something? And then he got all fancy with his remote. Do it? Dude, that's the next level right there. Imagine street drifting but not in real life in video games and having a plate like this <laughs> that's sick but not not in real life in video games i don't know what you would call this if monocoque. you would mo monocoque i think it's a monocoque right <laughs> i don't know that's funny i just think it's so cool how you're basically sitting underneath the frame rail the monocoque the mono rail the chassis whatever you want to call it i don't know it's so cool thank you man for letting me drive your car Put in active mode so you're not running automatic, so you're shifting, you're paddling. 
Do you see how it goes back and forth? Mm -hmm. So the, the 12, which this is the only car that has what's called a precog. So you see how it's got a little play here? Yeah. So if, like, let's say you want to upshift. If you hold it back, the computer knows that you want to shift. And then you click it and it shifts a lot quicker than a normal shift. Huh. And I just put it in drive for you, but you can put it here in neutral. Compared to the Huracan, this is way better for a taller person. Like I feel like I got a ton of room in here. A lot more room. Yeah. Even here, I've got a lot more room. You even have cup holders. No way. <laughs> yeah. Wait, let me see these cup holders. Two cup holders that are in here. You can see them. In are they in the, are they in this hole? Yeah. Man, Lamborghini did the same thing. But these actually have room in the Lamborghini. There's one that's so close to the upper part of the console. Yeah. They're like you can't even fit a Coke can in there. Just the turbo whistle though, man. Should be worth some noise. It's getting kind of dark. Now. <laughs> so that's probably just whenever you go catless on these cars, you start hearing the whistle, yeah. Yeah. When you go, I mean, you can hear it a little bit. What's he doing? I'm trying to race. Adjust everything here from your suspension. Right now it's in sport, but then you got always. I always keep it in track for power. Yeah, just put it whatever, whatever you tune. like driving it in. Sport's good. It's still gonna be bumpy. It's super stiff. So one thing about these compared to like the 720, I found is that even if you put the 720 in track, it's still not as stiff as this in like sport. Wow, the brakes actually feel like a oh, yeah, proper the, race car. Yeah, they bite. They're not like overly assisted, you know. Like you can actually put some pressure in them. So we're going right, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, I have no idea where we're going. But we're still at NASA though, so I should go slow for a while. Yeah. I see what you're saying. So if you want it to shift faster, you start like kind of resting your hand on it a little bit and then just click, right? Yeah, you kind of pull it back a little bit. Yeah, I get you. It's called a pre, it's called a pre cog Interesting. So right now we're leaving NASA and we were like in a, an area where we're not supposed to be. And since this government property, they're super, super strict about speeding. So I'm right now in a 700 horsepower McLaren, and I'm having to drive 45 miles an hour, and it's torture. <laughs> Just look at look at this open road, man. Three lanes, <laughs> and you insane. gotta go 45. Yeah, but we're being respectful. They let us in. They're home, so we're gonna drive slow. We're almost to the gate. I know. Can't come soon enough. What do you say? 15 minutes later. It's about 15 minutes? 15, 20 minutes, yeah. We are still on the same road. I, I think we're on an Air Force base now. I don't know what's going on with this GPS. I accidentally made the window all, all gross and stuff because I hit the windshield wiper. <laughs> the car has great visibility though. It feels great at 40 miles an hour, but we were told like any sort of speeding here is no joke. Like they don't abide by normal laws, so I'm actually like legit, legit not speeding here. But it's like automatic handcuffs. Yeah, yeah, like they don't even care. They don't care who you are, they don't care how fast you were going. They're just like, huh, you have no rights. So hopefully, um, we're gonna, if we see anyone, we're gonna ask for directions to civilization. Um, and then hopefully we can, you know, maybe floor it. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'll go that way. What? No way. I don't think we can leave. You go that way, no? Uh, maybe, yeah. That's this cop. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah you, I think we're good. you go out this way. Yeah. Wow. Well, I thought we were stuck, man. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it for a second. But look at this security. I mean, they don't mess around here. It's like a fortress. I think we're still on base, though. So we've established we're off the base now, and I think we're at a cruise port. We're just like a normal port. So is it cool if, if I if I push the pedal in? Rip it. All right, let me make sure that there's no. Is that, is, that a, is that a bridge? Like, <laughs> where are That's we? an exit ramp. I'm about to get on the highway. All right, dude. This is the this is the space right here. You ready? Give her a rip. Not as aggressive. Okay. Yeah. It's not as aggressive. It's very linear, but not as aggressive. Yeah. Dude, this thing's rad. Let's see who's that behind us. Yeah, I'll just wait and see if there's a cop. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately we got dumped straight out of the Air Force Base onto a, a not so good public road. So we'll have to revisit this tomorrow to hopefully get a couple pulls in. But can we can we show them the door thing? Because that's kind of cool. Oh yeah. So look at that. the gauge. You close the door. The RPMs drop because the car wants to be quiet. Yeah. And then when you open it, it revs up so you can hear it. Silly McLaren. <laughs> How do I open the door? Just pull the handle. Right there. Right there? Oh, right here? Yeah. And then I just lift? Yeah. Push it out. That's so cool. Is it louder? Yeah. All right, I'll take it. All right, so it's a new day. We're not stuck on an Air Force base. Mark's so kindly giving me the keys <laughs> again so I can actually floor the car this time and not just putt around at 35 miles an hour. Totally. Yo, I think the guitars from Journey like actually legit wants to buy this thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how much? Where can I buy it? Who do I call? I'm saying you like, just be like, yo, 400 right now. <laughs> I bet I'll do it. He wants it with the wrap and everything. He wants it with the wheels. Does he? Yeah. that white 650 yeah and it's just complete dead silent you don't hear the turbo or something so yeah we'll give her a quick grip Yo, should I 
less boredom. <laughs> Me being like a turbo guy, like yeah, the, the Porsche is rad and you know, it's all motor and all that, but man, dude, turbo cars are so good. Like having a turbo exotic is a dream. Yeah. <laughs> They don't chirp. They just whine a lot at high speeds. Yeah. But anyway, it's 
a red car. I appreciate you letting me drive it. Hopefully the GoPro is still in the back bumper. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Ask him. I'm gonna buy this thing. <laughs> we're, not, we're not joking by the way. This dude's like literally right there and was like talking about buying the car. We're yeah, he's from uh... The lead guitarist of Journey. Journey. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> Chad's gonna play. He's got guitars in there. Thank you again, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, for real. Oh, do you want to plug your channel or... or because it's in that weird mode? I'll put your Instagram on the thing. How's that? Yeah, well, you can plug my channel. Okay. It'll be up soon. Okay. FS Garage. Okay. FS Check Garage. It Check it out, guys. Follow the McLovin. And the Lambo. Lambo's getting fixed soon, so... Hell yeah. We'll bring that down to Florida. That'll be sick. Or when I'm up there. You never had driven a UGR. Have Never. You? All right, we'll bring it down. Yeah, that'll be fun. You can keep it on your uh, backyard. Oh, my forge? Yeah, your yeah, forge. Cool. Yeah. I thought it'd be a cool thing to uh, show you guys around a little bit. How do you say it? Provost? Provost? I don't know. Yeah, so they're uh, they're one of the sponsors of this rally. And this is the craziest bus you'll ever see. Country, you want to give us the tour? All right, so Country told me that this was going to be a pretty crazy bus. I didn't really know what to expect. But if JJ's driving, you know it's going to be crazy. <laughs> you whip this thing, man? You see, it goes pretty fast, huh? Yeah. All right, Country. What is this thing? This is uh, this is the new drift bus that we're gonna start drifting in this little bit later on. But that's for you to do, dude. This is this is our home when, we, when we're traveling and um, we're doing this fun uh, fun things. Obviously this week, you know, it's just like the hangout spot. Come in here, you know, make yourself something to eat. Got the good dining area over here. Watch a little TV and um, See? just relaxing in the back over here. You have all... I can't get over this. This is legitimately nicer than my house in here. I don't even... Like, what would you use this for? I guess if you're doing, like, some cool, uh... Like, tour or something? I guess for stuff like this, maybe? Yeah, so, um, basically... This is, like, the super tour bus. You see in the back over here, you got the restroom here. So if you're a famous celebrity, I guess you'd like ride in one of these? Yeah. Well, you're famous. You're famous. <laughs> <laughs> the the day will be riding in one of these. Inside. So the, the bed ain't pushed back normally, so we have it closed off, but it pushes back and this will open up. As you can see, we got a little stuff in here, but then you got the back restroom over here. No. Um, all these. It's like leather on the walls. Yeah, you know. You need washroom clothes? What is, no, it doesn't have a washer and dryer. You're it kidding. It does have a washer and dryer. What doesn't it no. have, man? So. Get out of here. Wash and dry. Man, this thing is so extra. Man, it's nice. It's comfortable. This is like, hands down, you know, I toured with many people, but this, this, this bus is as, as good as it gets. It's a very, very fun treat to have for this, for this rally. It's been really cool. I've been uh, coming up here and eating food sometimes or doing some editing and man, I just can't get over how rad this thing is. JJ, what do you say? We'll all move in? We'll live in here? Uh, of course. Yeah, you down? Uh, I'm down. <laughs> so I don't really have any idea what video I'm going to toss this into because I've kind of been filming all over the place. But we're at a really cool place called The Hangar. So this place just opened four weeks ago. And I don't know if you guys have heard about anything like this, but it's basically a place where a lot of these people can store their cars in these really, really nice little warehouse areas, store, play, hang. They've got some cool stuff over here. And like I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do, so I thought I'd make a quick montage, because who knows if I'll ever build something like this again, or if you guys have ever seen something like this. I don't know, so I'll just walk around and kind of show you guys this cool little complex that would be most people's dream garage, so. So I guess how a lot of these bays work, they come kind of like unfinished like this. They're still very nice and then people can buy them kind of like apartments and then they can decorate them like that first bay that I showed you guys. So it's a cool little concept here in, uh, where are we? I don't even remember what, West Palm Beach I think? But it's a pretty cool option for people that don't have a place to store their cars and want to hang out with other people with cool cars. 
I don't think it'd ever work with drifting now. So this marks the end of this awesome Pulse Rally that I was on. Uh, I know I didn't really like film a ton of the Rally Rally stuff. Uh, a lot of yesterday and the day before, you know, I filmed the McLaren thing, but I was just trying to like enjoy it and be present. And I went up driving one of our friends GT3 RS's that had a different exhaust and kind of playing around with that. And that was fun. We stopped by Ultra, did a bunch of cool stuff. And I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering why I didn't bring my car. And the main logic behind it was the Rally started like, uh, like three hours away from me so it just it seemed silly to go drive my car three hours there and then three hours back to where I lived and then drive here and there in retrospect I wish I did and it was just stupid me being like oh, I don't want to put miles on my car but that's what it's for and I'm not in that mindset anymore and I was just kicking myself every time we went somewhere like man I wish I had my own car but I had a blast I got to drive a bunch of people's rad cars hung out with country hung out with bunch of cool new people that I met and I'm excited to hopefully do more rad stuff like this occasionally when I do have time so anyway I want to thank Pulse Rally for having me out I want to thank country for making it possible everyone else involved and you guys for watching and tomorrow we're gonna to go back to doing some cool stuff in the shop so anyway thank you guys and I'll see you tomorrow